Hi guys, this is Nia and today I'm going to show you how to paint simple roses. It's Valentine's Day next week so I decided to also paint them in a heart shape. Let's start by drawing them out first. Like usual, they're super simple. I just start by drawing very small curved lines facing each other and this is going to be the center of the flower. Then I just repeat the same thing as I get towards the outside of the flowers and I try to also misalign all of the petals so it looks more cohesive and natural. And as I get towards the couple last rows, I try to enlarge the petals slightly. As you paint though, don't worry about touching the sides of each petals because we want to leave a little bit of white space to lighten the painting and you're basically just going to use the same movement as before by painting each individual curved lines. When you draw the center curved lines though, try to paint using the very tip of your brush and then as you move towards the outside, you can use more pressure to make larger petals which are a bit more visible. For the leaves, I'm just going to make simple leaf shapes with the midrib and veins in some of them. I don't want to complicate the painting because I want the roses to still be the main focus. I'm also going to include flower buds and I like to make the bulb shape with slightly frilly tip at the top. You can layer a couple of petals together or leave it as if only a single petal is visible. Then I finish off with the receptacle at the bottom where I make it a slight triangular shape and then continuing on with the stem. I'm going to first show you how I'm going to paint them. You can use any color you want. I think blue would also be a nice option too but I want mine to be a slight coral pink so I used my pink color that I mixed myself for my peony flowers. I used a lot of different colors for this that I've listed in the peony tutorial. So if you're interested, you can check them in the tutorial. But you can just use any pinks that you have or mix your own. So basically, I start with a very, very thick consistency for the center. I use the very tip of my brush to create really small lines. And when you're doing this with quite a large brush like mine, be mindful of how much liquid is loaded on your brush because the paint will flow much faster with nowhere to go and thus it'll create a lot of puddles. So I like to make sure that my brush has a really tight tip before applying the thick paint on paper. I like to paint a couple or a few flowers at a time just so I have a bit of time for the paint at the center to settle and then I take a very thin consistency of paint and this can vary with how much of a contrast you want in your painting. I like to keep mine very light so I have much more water compared to paint and I start painting the layers with a bit more thickness by using more pressure on my brush. And I also tried to touch the color I painted at the center lightly so some of the thicker paint flows through the newly wet area creating a slight gradation. Then I continue on to paint the rest of the petals with a very diluted paint to create the soft pink color. While doing this, you also want the paint to not be puddling so you can still control the flow of paint. Then to finish it off, I like to take a light to medium consistency and paint a little bit of shadows behind certain petals by placing them in areas where I feel like the petals are blending too much. And this slightly darker color will break the bulkiness when too many petals are combining with each other if, say, you didn't leave enough white space. I also use this chance to sharpen certain edges of some of the petals that might be unclear. Next, I'm going to show you how I paint the flower buds. I like to point my brush to the top of the buds and then putting a bit of pressure as I paint downwards a few times creating a frilly top. Then I continued with a green color to paint the receptacle and the stem. You can paint a few of these to get used to the motion first 
And for the leaves, I just use the same green, but I like to also layer on a thicker consistency to give the lines some definition. And I also use this darker green to paint the veins of the leaves. You can also add tinier buds by using the same green color. And these are good for some tiny parts that needs to be filled in the final composition. Another way to paint the flower buds is by starting with a thick consistency paint like before. Then I cleaned my brush and continued with clean water while activating the thick paint before to create a nice gradation from the top to the bottom. But I suggest doing this for larger flower buds, if not the water would be a bit too difficult to control. Then you can finish off the same way as the other flower buds. You can also add another layer of thicker consistency to the flower buds before to separate the petals. Before I begin to paint, I want to make sure that I have enough paint on my palette just to paint a few flowers and I like to actually add a bit of Quinn Opera to my muted coral pink just to intensify the pink for the center of the flower. I've also drawn out very lightly with pencil a heart shape but you can also turn this into any other shapes that you want or just leave it as a loose bouquet. I like to start by tackling the middle of the composition and then working outwards so I started by painting three center of the flowers first so I can wait for the first one to settle. If it's a bit difficult to paint the smaller center using the same brush size, you can actually opt for a smaller brush too for better control of the water flow, then switching to a larger brush for the larger petals and the outside. When you are painting the outer layers of the petals with the very light consistency paint, and as your brush touches the thick paint, it'll pick up some of the pigment so the color will become more intense than what you initially loaded. But if this is not what you're looking for, you can actually just dab off the excess paint on tissue, then adding a bit more water to dilute the paint, and then continue with the rest of the petals. If you want to overlap the flowers, I suggest to paint the one at the front first so you don't have to do the guesswork of which part of the flower wouldn't be visible. But if you place them further apart, you can start with the one where the paint is starting to dry. So if any parts of the painting is puddling, it won't run through a new wet area. When it's time for you to paint the second layer for the shadows, you can always wait for the paint to dry first by painting other flowers. I like to scatter them around randomly and even paint on the edges. And when I paint near the edge, I should actually erase a bit more of the line because of how light I'm using the watercolor. The line will actually show through and when a pencil mark has been painted on, you won't be able to erase it. So if you paint something already but you forgot to erase, make sure that the paint isn't touching the pencil mark and leave it to dry first then erase the outline. Then after that, you can continue painting right to the edge of where the pencil mark was before. You can also draw out the outline way lighter than I have. I just wanted to have a bit more visibility for you guys to follow. I'm just going to speed this up here while I paint a couple more flowers because the steps are quite repetitive. As I've painted a few flowers, I also want to start adding some leaves around. 
This is optional though. I think if you would actually just want to practice painting the flowers, you can just repeat the flowers instead of adding the leaves and the buds. I think it'll actually make it look like a flower box and you can also mix different colors if you would like. I personally like the pink and green combination, which is why I've decided to paint it this way, but feel free to just adjust the painting as you like. And for the green, I first use a mixture of sap green with burnt umber to place some leaves around the roses that I've already painted. I just scatter them around randomly whilst playing with the angles and the size of the leaves. Then I decided to create separate dark green and light green mixture. For the dark green, I used a mixture of viridian and burnt sienna. Then for the light green, I used a mixture of sap green and permanent yellow deep. So I can alternate between the two colors whilst also switching up the ratio to get different tones and values. If you would like to, you can also layer some subtle textures by negative painting some veins, but you can skip this part if it's a bit tricky because we're going to just paint the veins at the end anyway. I just personally like the variety of textures, so I try to include as many as possible. Next, I want to paint some flower buds using the same technique as before, and again, I'm going to scatter them around in some spaces. For the larger buds, I decided to paint in the larger area, and for some of the tight spaces, I plan on using the smaller flower buds to fill in the small spaces. I want the flowers to all come from the center, so for the buds at the bottom, I paint them facing downwards so the stem wouldn't float randomly. And to paint them upside down, you can also rotate your paper around for easier paint application. For the rest of the spaces, I'm just going to fill in the larger ones with more flowers. I like the fact that some of the flowers are hidden behind the leaves too. I think it makes it look more like a rose bush. And just fill in the rest accordingly because your painting might look completely different from mine in terms of composition. You can also add the shadows for the roses which are placed overlaid on top of each other and if the light colors are too similar, you can use the medium consistency paint to separate the flowers by adding a slight outline or shadow so the direction of the petals are a bit more visible. I'm going to place the details on the leaves once I've painted most of the large main leaves. And while my brush is still loaded with the dark green, I also add them to the stems to intensify the color. I try to make them a little bit darker when there's only a small area. That way it looks like it's placed right at the bottom of the roses and it separates itself from the top layer.
I tried to fill in the empty spaces right to the outline. This way you get a clear silhouette of the shape. If not, the silhouette might look a little bit off. And I'm just going to repeat all the different elements to fill in the rest of the spaces. Once I filled in all the spaces, this is the chance where I add all the details and keep the balance throughout the whole composition. I also take the time to look at the painting as a whole and place any additional leaves where I feel the need to. Like for example, the four roses near the center I feel like is sticking out too much and is looking a bit heavy compared to the rest of the placement. So I'm going to add some small leaves to break the silhouette of the pink. It also helps to increase the contrast of the shadows because I feel like there's too much light pink here so I used the dark pink to again separate the petals to give them more distinct layers. And for the rest of the tiny spots, I decided to add really small leaves just to fill in those spaces right to the edge. I also feel like the smaller leaves give the composition a lighter feeling. And once I filled in all the empty spaces, I erased the outline then I make final adjustments to the bottom because I feel like the heart shape looks a little bit stumpy. So I decided to extend the flower buds at the bottom to add a little bit more length to the silhouette. And that's pretty much it. This is the finished heart shape roses. You can obviously use this as a card design for different occasions such as Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, or even to give to your special someone or for a thank you card. So that's it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed this one and learned something new and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!